Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we will talk about the First Battle of Lexington, otherwise known as the Battle at the Hemp Bales. This occurred at Lexington, Missouri on September 13th to the 20th, 1861. After a second Confederate victory at Drywood Creek, Sterling marched his ever-growing army towards Lexington, Missouri. His goal was to take Lexington from the Union, which was defended by U.S. Colonel James A. Mulligan and 3,500 men, along with seven artillery pieces. Fighting started on September 13th when two Union companies that had been posted behind hemp shocks opposed Price's movements. Price moved his men back to Garrison Creek to await more infantry and his artillery. The reinforcements arrived that afternoon, and he took a more western route, eventually arriving at Independence Road. Colonel Mulligan dispatched four companies of the Missouri Infantry. These Missouri troops were loyal to the Union, it should be noted, to intercept Price, along with two companies of Van Horn's United States Reserve Battalion. Both sides met at the Macapela Cemetery south of town. After a short engagement, the Union forces pulled back to prepared positions inside Lexington near the Masonic College and the emergency hospital that was set up at the Anderson House. Mulligan had decided to stay entrenched in Lexington. He didn't have enough water, but he wanted to wait long enough for reinforcements to arrive. While this happened, General Price waited outside Lexington for more ammunition. The battle then recommenced on September 18th, with the Union defending not only the hospital known as the Anderson House, but also protecting about $900,000 in cash and the Great Seal of Missouri. On September 18th, Price bombarded the Union soldiers for nine hours. He followed it up with an attack on the Anderson House. The Anderson House was a three-story Greek Revival-style house constructed by Oliver Anderson, a prominent Lexington manufacturer. Because of its strategic significance, General Thomas Harris of Price's command ordered soldiers from the 2nd Division of the Missouri Guard to capture the house on September 18th. Shocked at what he considered a violation of the laws of war, Colonel Mulligan ordered the structure to be retaken by the Union soldiers. Company B, the 23rd Illinois, Company B of the 13th Missouri, and volunteers from the 1st Illinois Cavalry charged from the Union lines and recaptured the house, suffering heavy casualties in the process. Harris's troops recaptured a hospital later that day, so it would change sides yet again, and it remained in the state guard hands thereafter. The most controversial incident of the battle would occur during the federal assault on the Anderson House, when Union troops summarily executed three state guard soldiers at the base of the grand staircase in the main hall. The Southerners claimed the men had already surrendered and should have been treated as prisoners of war. The Union troops, who had sustained numerous casualties and retaken a residence, considered the prisoners to have been in violation of the laws of war for having attacked a hospital in the first place. The Anderson home was heavily damaged by cannon and rifle projectiles, with many of the holes still visible both inside and outside the house today, which it now serves as a museum. The next day, Price kept the Union under heavy artillery fire and prepared for the final attack on the fortifications. He also dispatched 3,000 men under M.M. Parsons, a Missouri State Guard Brigadier General, to block a relief column of 1,000 men under U.S. Brigadier General Samuel Sturgis. At 8 a.m. on September 20th, Price's men advanced from around the Anderson House behind the mobile breastworks made of dampened bales of hemp, which aided against artillery and musket fire from the Union soldiers. Estimated casualties of the battle was 3,500 U.S. men, 100 Missouri State Guard. However, these numbers are misleading. There was less than 50 Union soldiers actually killed. Join us next week for the Battle of Liberty, otherwise known as the Battle of Blue Mills Landing.